It's beginning to look as though it is going to get close, but for a long time it didn't seem it would be. And that's primarily because ZANU PF. Uh, has all the state institutions at its control, controls most of the media, uses the military to put pressure on people to vote the way they want, uh, controls, for instance, out in the countryside where 40 percent of the population live, the tribal chiefs, is able to, in other words, get block votes uh, through them. Uh, but we've seen things starting to change. And part of the reason, I think, for that is that this time round, people are genuinely energized. The disappearance from the scene of Robert Mugabe, although we, he's made a, uh, a last-minute appearance, appearing to, to, to back Chamisa, that his removal from the scene has given people hope, I think, that in Zimbabwe things can really change. And unlike in previous elections, uh, there really is a great deal more freedom than there has been in the past. It's been interesting that Chamisa, for the MDC, has been put all over the country, but no threat of violence. In the past, it would have been absolutely impossible to do that. Uh, elections were always accompanied by violence, sometimes quite serious violence, as in 2008, 200 people uh, killed. So the question now is that focusing very much more on the two parties, particularly, I think, on ZANU-PF, to demonstrate that their claims that they really are changing, that they are now the party of reform, are credible. You know, uh, Mnangagwa says Zimbabwe is now open for business. He will be hoping that he can convince enough people that, that is really the case. But at the back of people's minds, he will still be associated with the old ZANU-PF. After all, they've been in power for 38 years. After all, Menangagwa himself was the, the right-hand man of Robert Mugabe. Back in the 1980s, he was the state security minister who took control of the massacres uh, in Matabililand uh, that killed thousands and thousands of people. In 2008, he was the man uh, who was in, in control of suppressing the MDC after they won in the first round of the presidential elections against Mugabe. So, you know, is he able to convince people? That's really the question, I think. You mentioned this, that the MDC came really close in, in 2008, and then they were bullied and outmaneuvered by Mugabe. Yes, I mean, that's absolutely the case. Uh, Morgan Chwangirai, who was uh, the leader of the MDC at the time, did very well in the first round, beat Mugabe in the first round. But after that, the coercive apparatus of the state was put to the use of ZANU-PF in terrifying MDC or potential MDC voters to back off. Now, this time round, we're not seeing anything like that level of co coercion. Yes, it's there, uh, but nothing like the, 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 to the degree it was in the past. And this time round, for the first time in many years, we're seeing international observers taking part in this election as well, from the EU, from the African Union, and from the United States. And Zimbabwe, whether it's under the ZANU-PF or the MDC, desperately needs uh, international aid at the moment, needs an end to the sanctions. Uh, and unless this is a, seen to be demonstrably a free and fair election, they won't get uh, th th that sort of relief that they desperately need. So I think it's important to show that this will be a fair election.